today we're taking you inside Cucina Lorenzo de' Medici to learn the basic building blocks of Italian cooking. But you won't learn these tricks from me. We've got an expert chef here on hand, Marco, to teach us more. Hello everyone, I'm so proud to be here with you today and I'm here just to teach you these basic, basic cooking techniques that will just mainly make the best sauces in the world. With just a few handy hints from Marco, you'll have all the tricks you need to whip up something special in a flash. Basic Italian cuisine is mainly made of very simple ingredients, very fresh ingredients, and ingredients on season, in season. Here we have a big, vast range of these so-called fresh ingredients. It's summertime, so summertime is an explosion of a very fresh, you know, carrots, onions, celery, but basically tomatoes. To me, tomatoes, the best tomatoes are just fantastic from the end of May till, you know, September. And here we have few of the best tomatoes to be used in tomato sauces that we do today. Uh, I told you about tomato sauces because we do few of them starting with the same kind of basic ingredients. Most of the people talk about Mediterranean ingredients and most of them, they don't know exactly what it means. Mediterranean ingredient means that they are just mainly from the basin of the Mediterranean, you know, seas, and they're fresh and they're just filled with nutrients and with a big flavor. The best source of Mediterranean ingredients today is just here. As you see, tomatoes, extra virgin olive oil, and herbs and spices. All right, first of all, let's start with something very simple, basic, but something amazing in terms of being so versatile to create different kinds of sauces from something that is called Italian basic soffritto. What is the Italian basic soffritto? It is mainly made of celery, onions, carrots. I'll show you very quickly how you should approach this kind of, you know, mincing. First of all, a carrot peeled, try to cut it in two, then you try to remove the angles like that. You see, you cut and you make a flat part, then you do a second flat part, then the third and the fourth. In this way, you have a basic you know, square kind of carrot, and you can just mainly cut it as you want. For this kind of sofrito, we need something very small. So we do slices, flat slices, and then we do something that is called matches, or batonet in French. And then from this cut, you can just mainly get something small and square that is just mainly basic to give the best flavor ever. So you put the carrots in. Not too much. Then, you put the celery. First, the carrots and the celery because they take a little longer to be cooked. And then, after a while, you saute. As you noticed, you don't put any fat at the moment because there is a big reason. Then you put the third element, that is onion, sliced very thin. Then, fundamental, salt. Don't be shy with salt. A little bit of pepper. Let it cook for one minute. And then you add a couple of squeeze of extra virgin olive oil. And saute for five to seven minutes. And then we can start to make any kind of sauce we like. I told you to saute the carrot, celery and onions in olive oil, but the olive oil has to be added in my philosophy of cooking after a while, so you start without any kind of fat. Why it is? Because you, you try to create a kind of protection to the, the sides of the vegetables, so you put less fat, because the mix, making a protection, the fat doesn't get inside, and you need a lot less, 40% less, so it's kind of a lighter recipe. You put salt before, because salt takes out all the water, so it starts something like a cooking process without olive oil. Now, at home, you can even make this kind of cutting much more roughly, you know. I used to cut this vegetable like that because I'm a professional, you know, cook, and because I come from a context that is the LDM Cucina and Cooking School, in which we do all the time something very, very precise and sharp because mainly we teach the technique of cooking. So feel free to do something much more rustic and you know, something bigger. The only thing you have to do is try to cook the vegetables nicely in order to reach that kind of level of crunchiness and flavor. Once you get this result here, we are ready to add some herbs. I like so much to aromatize with a little bit of rosemary, okay? A touch of parsley too, and a small leaf of basil, like that shredded. Once you use herbs, try to shred it with your hands because they give the best, you kind of 
sand once you shred it with your hands. Otherwise, with a knife, you can't oxidate them. It's even easier. Once all the herbs are in, after 10 seconds, what we do, we create the very basic Italian old style tomato sauce. Peeled tomatoes, steamed and peeled. What do you do? First, you add the juice and you hear this kind of nice noise. Then you add all the tomatoes peeled in. You don't have to crush them because we do it after. First, you mix it a little, you let it cook for a couple of minutes, and then what do you do? Very nicely, with the use of a fork, you just crush it. So the sauce that's coming out is something very rustic, but very filled with taste. I don't like those kind of sauces too many, too much homogenic. So this is something very old style that mainly works out in any kind of situation. Mix a little more salt because the tomatoes are quite sweet. If you want a pinch of brown sugar that makes everything a little more milder, let it cook for 15, 20 minutes off the flame. Let it sit, cook your pasta. The best pasta here to me are potato dumplings or something like ravioli. Not too much filled inside with something tasty, so potato ravioli, and you serve it with, with this sauce, it's gonna be something amazing. Okay, that is the result of the sauce that has been cooked for 15, 20 minutes. I'll show you the consistency in the dish so you understand exactly what I'm talking about. It's something kind of thick, but not too thick. It is exactly the consistency you should have once you saute the pasta or the gnocchi inside. Then, with the adding of a very nice flakes of pecorino cheese can be something a little more aggressive and spicy as a taste, because in this case it's kind of mild. And this can be a very basic, fresh vegetable sauce, even for vegetable lasagna. So it's something kind of very, very used for different kind of, you know, cooking styles and methods.